Something thudded into the wall of the corridor. Darman didn't even hear the shattered gun fire. The Verpine projectile was never in danger of hitting anyone, but he suspected they'd have known all about it if it had. Wow, that's some dent, Aten said. I don't think the good doctor is going to come quietly, though. Nina, are you picking this up? Darman said. Found her, just like that. There was the faint sound of movement in his earpiece. He'd switched off the video feed. Niner sounded almost relaxed. That's the first bit of luck we've had. Yeah, but she's got a verpine on her. They're fragile weapons, and they don't bounce. Give her a fright. I've got a few frighteners ready. If you need a hand, we're going to have trouble getting in. I reckon all the emergency doors have shut tight. All quiet out there. Apart from Majestic getting too on target for comfort, yes. We don't want to take the whole building out with you still inside. Can you go back for the other ram and try to force the front doors? Do you need us to? We'll try getting Uthon out via the drains. If we can't, it's Plan D. Cheer up. Still got E through Z plans. Fee's voice said. <laughs> One day, Fee. I'm going to give you a good slap, Darman said. Aten held up his hand for silence. Darman heard the faint sibilance of whispered conversation, and then the door slammed and the lock clunked. So it wasn't an automatic safety door. Uthon had company. She really doesn't know me, does she? Darman said, and peeled off a few centimeters of thermal tape. He checked around the corner with the probe, loath to test his armor against a verpine. It's going to take more than a lock to keep me out, sweetheart. He hugged the wall. He was nearly at the door when it opened, and he found himself face to face with two Trandoshans who seemed pretty surprised to see him. Maybe it was the armor. It seemed to have that effect. There was nowhere to run. There were times when you could pull your rifle, and times when you couldn't, and DCs weren't much good at point-blank range unless you used them as a club. Darman aimed an instinctive punch before he thought about what he would do with the explosives in his hand. Even with an armored gauntlet, it was like hitting a stone block in the face. The Trandoshan fell back two paces, then his comrade came at Darman with a blade. There was a frozen second or two of bewilderment as the Trandoshan looked at his knife and then at Darman's armor. Atin, want to give me a hand here? Darman said quietly, taking one step back with vibroblade extended. What do... oh. Yeah. Oh. The nice thing about a fixed vibroblade was that nobody could knock it out of your hand, not unless they took your arm off with it. The Trandoshan seemed to be considering that as an option before taking a huge lunge, the blade of his weapon skidding off Darman's arm plate. Darman ran at the Trandoshan head first and cannoned into him, throwing him against the wall and pinning him there while he tried to drive the vibroblade into soft tissue. He tried for the throat, big blood vessels, quick effect, but the Trandoshan had his wrist clamped tight. It was taking Darman all his strength to keep the enemy's blade from his own throat. It seemed like a deadlock. The bodysuit was stab-proof, wasn't it? He couldn't see a tin. He had to concentrate on his own predicament, and he wasn't getting anywhere fast with the Trandoshan. It was time for one of those bar brawl tactics that Skirata made sure they all learned. Darman scraped his boot along the Trandoshan's shin and brought it down hard on his instep. It gave him the split second of loosened grip he needed, and he plunged the vibroblade in up to its hilt, over and over, not sure what he was hitting, but noting that the Trandoshan was shrieking and that the shrieks were gradually getting fainter. Skirata was right. Stabbing someone was a slow way to kill them. He pressed his forearm against the Trandoshan's neck and held him pinned while he slid down the wall. Darman followed him all the way down and finally knelt on his chest to make sure he didn't move while he jammed the blade under his jaw and across his trachea. He waited for him to stop moving, then scrambled to his feet to see Aten standing over the other Trandoshan, still cursing. There was a lot of blood, and it didn't look like Aten's. I could have done without that interruption, Darman said. Ruins your concentration, 
Atin said. Where were we? About to use my universal key. Darman retrieved the ribbon charge from the floor, wiped it on his sleeve, and set it with its detonator against the lock. They moved quietly to the hinge side, and Atin drew the Trandoshan array blaster he'd been so unwilling to abandon. Atin, it's capture alive, remember? She's got company. You make sure you need to use it then. If they'd wanted her disintegrated, they would have said. Darman took out the stun grenade and the mini EMP. She might have droids in there too. He juggled both spheres in one hand. Okay, I blow the lock and in these go. They're down for five seconds. I take Uthon and you shoot anything else still moving. Got it. Cover. The door exploded, showering Kuvara splinters. And Darman leaned forward and threw in the surprises. A blinding 300,000 candle power white light and 160 decibels of raw noise flooded the room for two seconds. And Darman was inside before he realized it, pinning Uthon flat to the floor as a tin pumped the array blaster across the room. The dust and smoke settled. Darman had cuffed Uthon. He didn't actually recall doing it, but that was adrenaline working. For some reason, he had expected a fight, but she was simply making an odd, incoherent groan. He'd become used to Etain's resilience. Uthon was a regular human, untrained, unfit, and apart from her intellect, nothing special. Darman picked up the verpine and aimed it at the wall. It made the faintest of whirring noises, then jammed. Niner was right. Verpines didn't bounce. Or maybe the mini EMP had temporarily fried its electronics. Darman here. We have Uthon. Repeat, we have Uthon. Fee's whoop hurt his ears. Niner cut in. Are we done here? Let's check we haven't missed anything, Aten. He glanced over his shoulder. Aten was cradling the array blaster, staring down at four bodies on the floor. It was all a bit of a mess, as Fee would say. Three of the dead were Trandoshans, and the fourth was a young, red-haired woman who wasn't pretty any longer, or even recognizable. Darman wondered if the girl was Uthon's daughter. Then, he had another thought. How many staff do you have here, ma'am? He took his helmet off and rolled her over so they were face to face. How many? Uthon seemed to be regaining her composure. You murdered my assistant. She had a blaster, Atin said, almost to himself. Darman shook her. Ma'am, I'm going to detonate an awful lot of ordnance under this building very soon, and your staff, if you have any, will be dead anyway. She was staring up into his face, seeming totally distracted by him. Are you really a clone? I'd like to say the one and only, but you know I'm not. Amazing, she said. Staff. Four more. They're just scientists. They're civilians. Darman opened his mouth, and Cal Scarada's voice emerged unbidden again. Not all soldiers wear uniforms, ma'am. High time those scientists took responsibility for their role in the war effort. Yes, it was personal. War didn't get much more personal than a virus aimed specifically at you and your brothers. Darman here. Sarge, Uthon's staff members are somewhere in the building too. What do you want to do? Retrieve them as well? I'm with Majestic. Wait one. Niner's Link went dead for a few moments and then crackled into life again. No, not required. Get her clear and let us know when you're going to detonate. They were just following orders. Uthon said. So am I, Darman said, and Trust gagged and hooded her with salvaged parasail cord and a section of sheeting. He replaced his helmet and heaved her over his shoulder. It was going to be a tough job getting her down those tunnels. Atin followed. They slipped back down the drain. Darman hoped that they could find their way back to the surface without Jannard as their guide.